Well, hello and welcome back to Greg's Game Room. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I am a big fan of the Raspberry Pi. I have one over there in my arcade one-up system and it's amazing having RetroPie and all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games on it. So when I heard that the Raspberry Pi 4 was announced, I couldn't wait to get my hands on one and I ordered one that minute that I heard that it was available and I just now got it like two weeks later. So some people got theirs like immediately. It took me forever to get mine, but here's mine from pieshop.us. Still in the box, still sealed. You see, I haven't even opened it yet. Anyway, this is a kit that has like a case and all the cables that you need and a SD card. I believe it's already formatted with uh, the operating system on it and everything. So I can't wait to, to try it out and see what it's like. Now, unfortunately, I heard that RetroPie does not work on this yet. So I'm going to be waiting a little bit more time before I, uh, you know, put RetroPie on here. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this thing. I can't wait. All right, well, here it is. Here is my pieshop.us kit that I got. It's a starter kit of the two gig model of the Raspberry Pi 4. As you can see, it comes with the two gig unit, the black high Pi case, a 5.1 volt USB-C power supply, a class 10 micro SD card with a Raspberry OS on it, a micro HDMI to HDMI cable, one meter in length, a USB card reader for micro SD cards that I will immediately throw away because I never use them, some aluminum heat sinks and a Raspberry Pi quick start guide which again I probably will never actually use. There we go. Oh, starting out with the Raspberry Pi kit quick start guide version 2. Well, hmm. Since this is a, ver a Raspberry Pi 4, I wonder what version 1 was like. All right, so let's take a look at this. We got Oh, thank you. Your valuable resources some pro tips uh, which I will completely ignore. And the hardware setup. Ooh, that's a nice little graphic of the Pi kind of telling you what it all does. That's neat. I like that. It's not bad. All right, then what we have here is a micro SDMI, mini SDMI cable, I guess it is. There's your HDMI on that end, your standard HDMI going into the television. And then there's that little micro HDMI that goes into the Raspberry Pi. Hmm. Then we got the, these are the heat sinks that go on the Pi itself to hopefully disperse some of the excess heat that it's going to generate. I mean, this thing's gonna be so powerful. It's gonna be, you know, heating up your whole room in no, no less than five minutes, of course. This is the micro SD card. It's a 16 gig card that has the Raspbian OS on it. I've never really fooled around with that before, so I don't know, I don't know anything about it. Over here we've got the official USB-C power supply. Now I understand that the early versions of the Raspberry Pi 4 have a problem with the power connector, the power adapter. If it's not the official one that it can't be powered off of it, there's a flaw on that first run of Raspberry Pi 4s, which I'm pretty sure this is going to be a first run Raspberry Pi 4, so it's a good thing I have the official one that supposedly already works. AC 100, 240 volt, 5060 input, 5.13 amp output. It's a bunch of letters and words and numbers that I don't know anything about. All I know is that I plug it in and it works. Ooh, it's got the little Raspberry Pi logo on it and everything. That's pretty neat. Plug that straight into the wall. You don't need a brick or anything like that. You just plug it straight in. There's my USB-C power connector there. Then we have a uh, memory card reader here, which I'll immediately throw out because I have like 50 of these things. All right, then we have the case right here. This is a, uh, I don't know who made this case. Maybe it was a pie shop themselves, but uh, oh, that's pretty nice, actually. Looks pretty nice. Uh, this is gonna be for the ports. I don't know which ports yet and there's the two monitor ports that's got to be the two monitor ports it's got to be like the audio output and it's got to be the power right there anyway yeah it looks nice it's a nice little case all right and now the main attraction the raspberry pi 4 B 2 gig model. I wanted the 2 gig model because honestly if I'm doing like RetroPie or something like that on it, I don't know that I'm going to need anything more than 2 gigs. Maybe I'll regret it at some point, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with the 2 gig. So let's open this up. I want to be careful with the box cuz I, you know, I just like I'm, I'm I like keeping stuff. I like being able to look back and say, "Hey, this is what the box looked like, not some torn up old box." Got to say, guys, I don't like this 
this box thing. Okay, open here. Okay, I'm an idiot. Open here, it says. Okay, how am I gonna open this without tearing it up? I wanna do it really nice. Okay, they don't, they like glue it so that you're pretty well, if you wanna preserve this box, there's really no chance that you're gonna be able to preserve it because now I've just shredded it. Jeez, come on guys. We like to keep our stuff in pristine condition and not to have it all torn up. All right, so here's the Pi 4. Uh, right here on the front, you've got the two uh, video outputs here. The USB-C power input right there. And I believe that's an audio output port right there. And then over here we've got, yikes, look at all these USB ports we got. Uh, your standard USB 2.0 ports right here. USB 3.0 ports, are these blue ones. And you've got your ethernet port here. I believe that is a gigabit port. And over here is the headers, which allows you to hook up things like uh, power uh, buttons and things like that. And then over here is the memory card slot right here. We're gonna plug our little 16 gig memory card into that. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's a pretty, pretty simple little uh, computer. All right, now I'm going to apply these little heat sinks on here. I think that this one goes on this chip right here. And I think this other little smaller one goes here on this chip right here. It's the only one that seems to fit appropriately. There were no instructions in the box that tells me exactly where these uh, heat sinks go. So I'm just gonna make an educated guess. We're just gonna peel the little adhesive backing off of this. There we go. All right, there we go. We got, got that one stuck on there. There we go. All right, well, there we go. We got both of the heat sinks applied. Now it's protected from ever being overheated or anything like that. Right. Also, here is my Raspberry Pi 3, just so you can kind of get a comparison between the two uh, systems. I mean, they look very similar. As you can see, the Pi 4 has the two uh, HDMI outputs, micro ones, and the Pi 3 has the HDMI, uh, the standard HDMI output there. And I still have the bottom of my case on this one. You can also see that they uh, flipped the USB ports and the Ethernet port so that you wouldn't be able to use a Pi 3 case. I mean, they're different here on the side anyways with the HDMI, but you wouldn't be able to use a Pi 3 case with a Raspberry Pi 4 anyways. Uh, it looks like the bottom is basically the same where the uh, memory card sticks in there. So yeah, fairly similar design between these two systems. Just a few minor tweaks and of course, a much faster processor from uh, what I understand. All right, now I'm gonna see how this case is gonna work in here. How do I, how do I get this open? Okay, so opening it wasn't that easy. Um, it's got these little clips here which can get broken fairly easily, I would think. Um, but what I ended up doing was just kind of like squeezing it here on the side and just kind of yanking it off and it came loose. But I imagine a lot of these clips are going to get broken, so just be really careful when you open it. Looks like this is going to go in here like so. I don't think there's any screws or anything to hold it down. It's just, it's just, you're just mounting it in there. Uh, it's not quite straight. It's a little crooked. There we go. Push it in a little bit down here, just a hair. Be very careful touching the circuit board, of course. You don't want to damage it or anything. But I'm a pro. I've damaged many circuit boards in the past. All right, that's pretty good. It looks pretty solid. It's in there pretty good. I guess it's not going to fall out or anything. I don't know what's holding it in there. It's probably just clipped here on the side, I guess. It might be nice if I had a clear case. I might upgrade it at some point and get a different case. But for now, this one will work. There we go. Now we got to plug in to see if it works. All right, let me go ahead and put this uh, memory card in here. Should fit in right there just nicely. Boop, right in there. All right, so I'm gonna do something a little crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, put this Raspberry Pi 4 into my arcade one-up. It's already set up and ready to go there. I mean, I could plug it into my TV over here, but uh, you know, it, it's too busy doing Sega Genesis stuff. So I'm gonna plug it in here to the arcade one-up. Okay, so here is what it comes up to when you first boot it up. Now, actually, it prompted me at first for some region information, which I went ahead and put in, and um, it wanted me to update it, which I tried to do, and it failed. Uh, I don't know if it just couldn't talk to the servers or whatever, but I just said, heck it, and I'm just going to go ahead and go through the desktop itself. So, as you can see, it has the, the start button or the Raspberry Pi button up here at the top corner. 
and starting out with programming on all these different programming apps, which I don't know what any of these do. Education has something called Smart Sim. Office has all your kind of typical Microsoft Office type stuff, LibreOffice. Internet, of course, is going to have your web browser. Sound and audio has your uh, VLC midi uh, media player. Graphics just has a basic image viewer. Games, you got Minecraft. Ooh, Minecraft. And Python games, which I have no idea what those are. Some accessories, archiver, calculator, file manager, PDF viewer. Help, which... You know, if you've never used a Raspberry Pi before, you might want to go to the help and read up on that. And some preferences, add or remove software, appearance, audio. This is some cool stuff. I'll be playing around with this. I've never really had a chance to play around with uh, any desktop flavors of Linux before. So this should be fun. All right, of course, I want to go to Internet and go to the Chromium web browser. Got to go to my YouTube channel. I got to go to my YouTube channel here. I mean, it loads okay. Probably, probably a little bit slower than my um, my uh, i7 does. Strafe here. I forgot to strafe. Okay, here we go. You have to hold down the C button. Of course, this is the Pro Controller, and uh, it has the, the buttons on the side. And I swear I could strafe by hitting the buttons on the side. Oh, my guy's almost dead. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's 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 pretty good. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. I could actually run this <laughs> on the side here while I'm playing other games on my uh, on my main TV. Hey, look, there I am again. Oh, I'm everywhere. Wow. Well, there you have it. There's my unboxing of the Raspberry Pi 4. If you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, please remember to hit the like, share, subscribe. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.